everybody, it's Sakar, and today we're going to be going over my Magic Award build that I have been using so far for the Scions of Athelia update. I have been absolutely loving this build. This is without a doubt my favorite build so far this patch, and I think that Mag Warden is going to be my favorite build of this patch. I just think that it's a lot of fun. I think it really counters the Stork meta that we're seeing, and I just think that overall, it just has some really, really nice damage on here. So one quick announcement real quick before we get started. I am streaming on YouTube nowadays as well as twitch so if you guys want to see me streaming see what it goes into all these builds all the behind the scenes on it come stop by i stream five days a week a friday through tuesdays so if you guys want to stop by i would appreciate every single one of you guys and just seeing all you guys and just seeing all the behind the scenes with this build all right so guys without further ado let's get on with this so this is going to be our superstar add-on and i know what you guys are thinking oh no thracians oh yeah so before we get to that point we're going to be an orc on our warden. In my opinion, orc is best in slot for this. You get an overall an extra weapon and spell damage, and it just really, really is hitting hard because of that. If you're feeling like you're having some tough sustain, you can always switch to something like Breton or even Imperial. That way it helps you out. But overall, orc is, in my opinion, the way to go on this. We're also going to have 40 points into health and 24 points into magic to give us a max magic pool of 18.2k, a max health pool of 29.1k. That's before our minor toughness, so it gets to about 31k. And then our stand pool gets to 16.4k as well. Our food is going to be Orzorga Smoked Bear Haunch. That's going to increase our max health as well as increasing our stem and magic recovery as well. And then also, as always, Vampire Stage 3 because Vampire Stage 3 helps us a lot with our tankiness. The less uh, the health you have, the less damage you take. So that on death passive, definitely make sure you have it slotted at all times. And then we're also going to be using the Warrior as our Mundus Stone. That's going to increase our overall weapon damage. That way it is as high as possible. So... For our first set, we're going to be using Clever Alchemist. That's going to be on our body at all times. Usually, I don't like Clever Alchemist because, I don't know, I, I just don't want to use my potion defensive or offensively. But, honestly, I'm having so much fun with this. So, for all you guys that don't know, Clever Alchemist gives you a line of max health. Uh, actually, two lines of max health. Weapon and spell damage. And also, when you uh, drink a potion during combat, you get basically 675 weapon and spell damage increased. So, that is a lot of extra damage an extra 675 just for, just for drinking your potion oh i'll take that any day of the week i'm hitting so hard because of that so overall clever alk i just think really goes well with thracians as well because of those two extra lines of max health so again we're using a heavy reinforced uh, helmet as well and then also moving on we're going to be using one piece magma incarnate that's going to help us a little bit more with our magic and stem recovery the sustains a little bit low on this build so this is going to help counteract that because of that just extra magic and stem recovery of that one piece so again medium impen for that and then our other set is going to be wretched vitality we're going to be using a heavy reinforced chest piece wretched vitality is going to be our back bar set and that's going to give us a lined up magic recovery stem recovery weapon and spell damage and while in combat applying a major buffer debuff to a target is going to grade you 260 magic and stem recovery same thing with a minor buffer debuff it's going to give you 130 magic and stem recovery so basically just by applying those you're going to get an extra 400 magic and stem recovery and that's going to help your sustain a lot please make sure that's active at all times that's going to be what's saving your life when you're just able to sustain in those fights because your wretched vitality is procced so moving on to our mythic it's going to be thracian stranglers and i know what you guys are thinking sakar you've put this on the last three or four builds yeah i know because it's fun and it's strong and this is my channel and i want to put out builds that i like and are fun so thracians what that's going to do is basically at max stacks that's going to give you an extra 1150 weapon and spell damage so you are absolutely hitting but the downside of it is that you're going to lose about 6,000 maximum health as well so you're going to want to rebuild into that you're going to want to build your attributes into health to kind of counteract that as well so moving on we're going to be using a medium wealth uh, medium in pen clever alchemist belt heavy reinforced clever alchemist legs medium in pen clever alchemist boots and then for one of our rings, we're going to be using Clever Alchemist in Infused with a weapon spell damage enchantment on it. And our other two pieces of jewelry are going to be Wretched Vitality. Both are going to be infused with weapon spell damage enchantments on it. So for our other ring and for our necklace as well. 
And then for our front bar, we're going to be using a Master's Perfected Ice Staff in the Sharpen trait with a Poison Damage Enchantment on it. So Master's Perfected Ice Staff, it's going to give you a line of weapon and spell damage for that Perfected line. And then uh, the actual two-piece is going to reduce the cost of Destructive Touch by 10%, which, cool, doesn't really matter. But... It increases your weapon and spell damage by 600 for four seconds as well. So let's just do the math real quick. So if you're in combat and if you're hitting people with your big combo, you're going to be hitting Clever Alchemist and it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 675. And then you hit somebody with Destructive Touch and that's going to increase your, uh, your weapon and spell damage by another 600. Just for these two things, you're increasing your weapon and spell damage by over 1200. So that is insane amounts of damage and you're just hitting so hard on this build i am absolutely loving it and then our back bar we're going to be using ice staff of wretched vitality defending with an increased weapon and spell damage shaman on it as well so before we get to our skills because those are kind of small and you know we'll get to that at some point uh we're going to go to our champion points first our blue slotables let's do it right here actually it's going to be easier our blue slotables are going to be focus mending mastered arms bulwark ironclad and then our red slotables are going to be sustained by suffering survival instincts pain's refuge and celerity and then our green tree what we really care about is breakfall as always they definitely make sure that's in rationer and liquid efficiency all right so moving on to our skills this was really important i wanted to get the bigger screen for you guys so you guys can see so frost reach this is going to be what's procking your master's ice staff and this is just it's a nice little spammable on here our tool tip is 8100 but again that's going to get significantly higher the more buffs we have up and we have a lot of buffs to get our weapon spell damage up higher i think that the minimum that or the maximum that you could see when you have everything procked right is you get to about 9000 like 400 or 500 weapon spell damage which is damn dude it's insane and then Bird of Praise, our next skill. This is going to be many skills in one. It's going to be your source of major expedition. So it's going to increase your movement speed by 30%. And then also it's going to be your snare removal. So you're going to gain immunity to snares and mobilizations for four seconds. And you just have minor berserk for having that slotted. So it's going to increase your damage done by 5%. And then a Lotus Blossom. This is going to be your source of Major Prophecy and Savagery. So it's going to decrease your weapon and spell critical by 2,600. Also, you're going to be getting healed every time you light and heavy attack. So definitely make sure you're having this active at all times. That critical damage is huge. And then also that healing is nothing to be shy about as well. And then Deep Fisher, this is going to be your burst damage on this build. So try to line up this so that's always hitting your enemies because it's also going to apply major and minor breach. So it's going to reduce your enemies' physical and spell resistance by both 6k and 3k. So that is absolutely massive for your... I mean, they're going to be a lot squishier after they get hit by this. So please make sure you're hitting them at all times with this. And then Shimmering Shield. Guys, trust me on this skill. Trust me. In a meta full of sorks... I put this skill on and so many of the sorks have seemed useless now because you're just absorbing their projectiles. And then on top of that, when you do absorb, absorb a projectile, you're going to get major heroism for six seconds. So that's going to grant you three ultimate every 1.5 seconds. So that is absolutely massive because you're going to want to spit out as many ultimates on this build as possible. Trust me, Northern Storm got a buff and we will be talking about it when I get to that point. And then Dawnbreaker of Smiting, you have this skill for two reasons. A, it's a fighter's guild on ability on your front bar, so it's going to increase your overall weapon and spell damage. And also, it's just a really strong hitting ultimate. Our tooltip on this is 15k, and we're not even buffed up. We're not even close to buffed up. So just imagine how high this is going to be when you're in the middle of fighting. You hit a lot of people with your major and minor breach on Deep Fisher, and then you hit that. Oh, ho, 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 that damage is insane. Okay, so back bar, we're going to be using Arctic Blast. Make sure you're using this morph because this is going to be based off of your higher weapon and spell damage. And so not using the other morph because the other morph is going to be give, be based off of your max health. So that's going to be kind of useless on this build. So please make sure you do that because this morph also does damage to your enemies a little bit and it's going to CC them. So if you can combo your abilities right, you can CC your enemies and they just absolutely do not stand a chance. And then Blue Betty is going to be your source of major brutality and sorcery. So it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 20%. Also, it's going to be giving you magic back over time. And also, it's going to be removing a negative effect from you every five seconds. 
And then Resolving Vigor, this ability is amazing. It's a five second heal. It's gonna help you get back to full health. And also it's gonna give you minor resolve. So it's gonna increase your physical and spell resistance by 3K. And then I've got Living Trellis on this uh, build. I like this morph a lot for this because it's going to give you an extra little bit of a burst heal and it lets you stay alive a lot longer. This is really doing a lot of healing. I've been checking on it a lot of the fights with my uh, combat metrics add-on. And this is one of the best sources of healing on this build. I, I definitely recommend having this on you at all times. And then Ice Fortress, this skill is non-negotiable because this is going to give you major resolve, so it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by uh, 6k for 30 seconds. And then on top of that, you're going to get minor protection, so that's going to reduce your damage taken by 5% as well. And also, for those little fun facts, you get a major buff and a minor buff from this, so this is going to proc both conditions of your Wretched Vitality. You know, if you just want to do that, I'm just saying this procs both conditions, so you don't have to proc multiple abilities. And then Northern Storm, this ability got a huge buff this patch, and I have been absolutely loving it. The damage on this got thrown up a lot this patch, so this is hitting very, very, very hard. And then also on top of that, it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 450 when this is all ramped up. And overall, this damage on this is absolutely nuts. I have been loving using this with it, with my full combo. Uh, and also on top of that, you get major protection, so it's going to reduce your damage taken by 10%. It is absolutely just insane amounts of damage on this. Uh, I definitely recommend using this more for more or using this ultimate more often than Dawnbreaker. I have had more luck with securing kills with Northern Storm rather than Dawnbreaker, and it's overall just a better ultimate in my opinion. So that is the entire build. I'm gonna show you guys one thing real quick. So we're gonna go over to this siege, which every single zone in uh, Cyrodiil has it, every single alliance has it. So uh, I say this for every build with Thrassians. On the EP side, you're gonna be going to go to the Northern Gate. For AD, you're gonna be going to the Eastern Gate. And for DC, you're gonna be going to the Southern Gate. And you'll be seeing this siege area for all three factions. So to build up your stacks of Thrassians, which is, you know, all you need to do is you just need to uh, just kill anything. You just need to kill anything. It's just kill an enemy. So doing this, shooting your siege, go to the scatter shot and shoot the, shoot it right in the middle right there. That just got me four stacks of Thrassians right there. You move it over. You shoot it over here. That's going to be another stack. Oh, God. I only hit one. Oh, no. That's embarrassing. Oh, no, that was embarrassing. I only got one. But you just go back and forth. You can see that right there. I just got four stacks right there. So you can just see this is a really quick way to just build up your Thrasian stack. So if you die... Oh, no, I'm just getting one. Oh, God. But either way, regardless, you can see... Yep, and that's another four stacks. So you can see I get it quickly. Um, I think that these are just role players. I was like, oh, there are people over here building stacks. But I think they're just new to the game. All right, so... That is the entire build, you guys. I really hope you enjoy. I can't stress enough how much I do really like this build. I hope that you guys like it too. If you do, please consider doing a few things. Subscribing to the channel really helps me out a lot. But if you are already subscribed, uh, please do not forget to like the video as well. Liking the video really helps me with my interactions and that just helps me as a full-time content creator. And if you just want to comment something, anything, I don't care, just say hi in the comments. That'd be awesome too. So guys, without further ado, let's get onto the footage of the build. And I really hope that you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys on the next video. Later.
Straight to your stereo. 